So I'm going to play a clip of Paul Washer standing outside of the G3 conference in Atlanta back in 2016, I believe. I had a much longer video uploaded to my first channel of this encounter, which gave a little more context to what happened here. But basically what happened was there was an abortion abolitionist organization that was pretty much causing problems at the G3 conference to the degree that they eventually got removed by security. Now, after the first day of the conference, these abolitionists confronted Paul Washer while he was walking with his son, Ian, back to his hotel. And Paul basically rebuked them, politely rebuking them for making abolition an idol. Now, we as Christians, we know that abortion is murder. We know that it's wrong and we know that God hates it, but we cannot make abortion abolition our gospel. I had to open up the session for the Virginia House of Legislature. Yes, sir. And the first thing on the docket, docket after I got done praying, first of all, the prayer was a scandal because I didn't do a general prayer. Right. But the first thing on the docket was abortion. And this lady from pro-choice got up and she uh, said uh, the fetus and you know senators have our representatives have a way of legislatures of protesting so they'll they cough when she said fetus they go life like that <laughs> and it was like probably i'd say half of them and then when she got done this lady got up and she's a representative from somewhere but i don't know who she is she got up she dismantled that to such a thing as that Everyone looked at that other woman like, you're a murderer. I mean, I've never mm -hmm. seen anybody mm -hmm. dismantle an argument. She said, my esteemed colleague over here, let me just put in perspective what she's trying to tell you in a covered language. Yeah. That since Roe versus Wade, the amount of people we have killed would be like if today we killed every human being in 25 states yeah. of the United States yep. of America. It's insane. And uh, God has given us a respite to preach the gospel so that people will be saved. But there is no saving this nation. Yeah. This nation, the, the bell's already rung. It has to be destroyed. Even if there's a great revival and it lasts for 150 years and we put abortion away, totally away, God still has to come and destroy this nation because of the blood it's already shed. There's you blood guilt. Yeah, right. you don't do that. You don't, yeah. you don't, it, look, it's not poetry. That's what brought people's problem. They look at the Bible as poetry. It's not poetry. When it said the blood cried from the ground, it doesn't mean God actually heard blood crying, but it is that powerful. Yeah. And it's always in his ears. That's why he has indignation every day, because every day he sees children murdered. Mm -hmm. Amen. See, so he's mad. He yeah. is mad every day. If he wasn't mad every day, one of the things you probably say is, if you don't have indignation of your heart, in your heart, are you even a good person? Yeah. Seeing people slaughtered. Okay? All right? Apply the same thing to God. If God is good, and I mean, we're evil compared to Him. Yeah. So if God is good, His indignation, oh do, my. Do the roof. Oh, you, you don't even, you, it, it's, that, that's why all this goofy stuff, you know? Um, everybody playing church, everyone. Because we want to figure out a way to advance the gospel without going to jail. Yeah. I don't want to go to jail. You know, I'm sorry, but, but it happens. It happens. Yeah. You know.